Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Victoria Pikowska, and I'm the founder of Victory Art. And today we're having an uh, amazing guest, uh, Paulina from GJW Gallery, one of our partner gallery, who is going to talk about amazing topic, and that's art on the internet. This topic is, is extremely important. However, not many artists are aware of what this topic uh, includes and how they should protect themselves. And uh, Paulina is going to actually tell us more about this topic. This is the last seminar from, from this small series. And I'm so happy that, that you are going to, to end this, uh, this whole, uh, whole project. Okay. Yes, because it's such exciting topic and I believe that one of the most important topics artists should cover. So, yeah, okay. Helena, I would love to give uh, my words to you. Please feel free to introduce yourself, to introduce uh, as well your gallery, your, your law practice as well, and then just jump to your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. So I will start to launch the presentation and then invite you again and I'll welcome you again. So again, on my behalf, uh, I would like to warmly, warmly welcome you um, uh, on the final seminar, as Victoria just uh, said, uh, in the project run by Victory Art uh, in cooperation with uh, another uh, galleries. And as uh, it was also said before, you have a large number of events behind you, I guess. And I would like to tell you about the uh, art on the internet uh, regarding the legal issue. So uh, my name is Paulina Maler-Kmiecik. I am the legal attorney, attorney at law. I represent the legal office, but as well, I represent the GJW Geodovo Gallery. And I will present uh, for you today um, the topic that was um, stated in our seminar schedule. And this is the art on the internet. And um, usual disclaimer <laughs> before we begin, because I wouldn't be a lawyer if I uh, wouldn't mention about that, this material is not to be taken or construed in any way as a legal advice. So if you seek or need any legal advice, please uh, be advised to contact with a qualified legal attorney. Even though um, I wish you the present uh, meeting today and hopefully my information will be helpful in your activity as an artist um, and will help you in the future. Okay, so taking, talking about uh, today's seminar content, as also Victoria said, this uh, is an important topic. Um, I was trying to create the topic as I was trying to do it. I created it by myself. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the most interesting definitions or areas that might connect with the art on the uh, internet. And as you can see here in these few points, I picked some um, um, themes. So after introduction, I'm going to tell you a little bit or uh, I'm going to compare a little bit the art on the internet and internet art. I will try to explain um, the public domain definition and the organization that is called the Creative Commons. I could not, I could not say about art on the internet, not saying about the blockchain, of course, and the legal aspects of NFT. I know that um, some previous lecture was uh, also devoted to NFT, but in my, yeah, in my, uh, let's say, performance, it will be the legal aspects of this matter. And at, at the final um, uh, time, I will just uh, tell you a little bit about the risks and hazards that are connected with the art on the internet and with the internet a little much uh, the same I did it in the last seminar that where at the beginning and the bottom, I also was telling about the risks of infringements of the rights. Okay, so I guess we could start um, 
uh, meeting and performing today's topic. Uh, so, trying to describe the, the topic, art on the internet, uh, we need to start, we need to make an introduction uh, that uh, the internet is making an impact on the art. And that's maybe the truism, but we uh, need to start from this point. Um, the web is the medium for sharing information globally. And we all are aware of it, that internet can be used to spread a message using human interaction. I mean, this is the tool that is that was designed for it. So um, when looking at the statistics, we can observe the steady upward growth of um, uh, internet uses in the world. And I was when I was browsing the information about it, I just found the chart that is showing that from 1993 uh, or maybe earlier till let's say 2018, from the zero users um, to the 2018, over 4 billion people um, become the internet users of the world. So we can see it's, it's amazing uh, power of this uh, public uh, platform and it's, uh, and it's important for um, every dimension, not only the art. And, um, but of course, um, in the relation of art and internet, we need to um, emphasize that internet gave rise to artistic exploration both for the public and, 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 and the artist, and gave the public the experience of art. And it's uh, also, I think, the obvious and basic knowledge. The internet is a tool that can be used to produce art and to support artistic collaboration, can be used to promote artists, can be used to selling a piece of art. So um, every artists may benefit from the internet. Every artist um, may benefit from how to make or put his or her work in the internet. And no matter um, whether you are or think as a traditional artist or net artist, you may use the internet for your purposes. And I am sure, and I'm sure that everyone that is working as an artist, but not necessarily feels and is aware that internet is, um, is so much present in our life that uh, that it's uh, very general and main way of of connecting uh, people any artist and uh, traditional art galleries and museums have long been the primary platform for um, exhibition and circulation of art uh, but the internet art uh, could be um, alternatively distributed and it's is just happening. Um, well, what else can, we can say that some artists are not, uh, do not anymore uh, rely on traditional art galleries or museums. And instead of that, they decide or, or they prefer to exhibit on the internet. And uh, some artists, quite opposite, maybe they will try to leave the internet, as I will uh, at the moment tell you a little bit about Igor. Um, uh, so they try to leave the internet area in the context of art form, but I am pretty sure that uh, they never could leave the internet as a medium because um, the website, the social media, I don't know, other art platforms are, as I said before, so obvious nowadays and um, usable and there are a way of connecting and contacting people that it's impossible to, to just, just leave it and to, to show your works and information about you only in a traditional way. Um, so um, the first, I would um, think about it like that, the first, association of art um, and the internet could be, for example, the online gallery where the art um, 
uh, or other online um, platform where the art could be simply um, digitalized and upload to be uh, uploaded to be viewable over the internet um, for the others for the purposes of promotion and sale. And in this moment, talking about um, online gallery or electronic gallery, let's say, I could tell you a few words about my project that I'm running, uh, that, I, that I represent. Uh, this is uh, GJW Gallery, Geodwo Gallery. Um, this is the Polish project. We run it in Poland, although we uh, it's um, uh, it's in digital uh, way. And this is the mutual project um, of the law firm and the Polish artist um, Igor Morski. And uh, the gallery is basically shown his work right now. Uh, but I think, and we plan in future to also um, spread it to some other um, authors or artists that will be chosen by us. And uh, our gallery is presenting um, the Igor's work in the climate of surrealism and hyperrealism. And you can visit us under the, uh, the website, uh, gjw.gallery. And uh, what I can say, say, um, just making a smart, uh, a quick digression, digression uh, in this point, I think such cooperation offers the opportunity to promote the artist, but above all, um, gives full protection of the rights of the artist. And I would um, assume it as a positive merger of law and, and, and the art because art does not operate uh, or does not operate outside the law. So they always goes together. And um, making step forward, um, trying to explain and talk about art on the internet, we might twist a little bit uh, the whole idea of art and internet and uh, try to look uh, at the topic uh, and talk about internet uh, art because art, internet, sorry, has played a major role in uh, broadening the boundaries of what is considered as art. So. I guess after some initial resistance, the impact of digital technology has transformed activities such as painting, drawing, sculpture, another form of activities, art, uh, artistic activities, uh, while new form such as net art or digital art have become recognized uh, as artistic practices. Um, well, internet art, also called like net art, is a form of new media art distributed via the internet. And in many cases, the viewer is, for example, drawn some kind of interaction with the work of art. Um, also, we could discuss or point out a little bit um, to a digital art, and that is contemporary artwork or a practice that uses digital technology as a part of the creative or presentation process that uses the methods of mass production or digital media. So after Vicky, we could state and we could say that um, net art could be recognized or as a graphic design, computer generated visual media, computer generated imagery, still animated digital installation, blockchain, and many, I guess, many, many more. And it's, uh, all show us that this and is recognized, as I said earlier, as artistic practices. So it's the same like with the music. A couple of decades ago, the music was just played in real, play by the instrument. And after that, we have electronic music that right now is the other kind of music that uh, playing um, with individuals. So I guess the same is with the art. So it's not necessarily uh, the actual physical works, but it's also mm, digital and net artworks. 
Um, art on the internet is uh, very connected with uh, and associated with the public domain. And this is a definition um, of the area that is uh, publicly accessible. Uh, in trying to explain this um, definition, we need to say that um, a work that is no longer copyright protected uh, of any reasons, because for example, the rights have expired um, depending on the jurisdiction on a certain time after author's death, or in some situation because the, um, the works were not being copyrighted, copyrighted it is considered to be in the public domain. Uh, so the public domain is not, um, that's a pretty important thing. It's not a strictly defined legal term. We do not find it in, for example, Polish jurisdiction uh, that is covered under some um, uh, law or a legal bill, but uh, it's more like a popular name of the concept. So this is a base of creative work that is accessible to everyone without restriction due to the rights that holders of copyrights have, and also the artists uh, that might be the holders of copyright, and may be used for any purposes. Okay, so um, with the public domain uh, are connected the copyright. So making a quick revision to the uh, previous seminar that I was talking about the copyright, uh, we need to say that copyright is a basic uh, intellectual property uh, form of right. And that means that an artist has the right to be recognized and listed as the author of his or her work. And of course, the copyright has its own attributes. It can, it can be transferable, it can be registered or not, depending on the uh, jurisdiction. But uh, public domain generally means that uh, you do not have to uh, uh, be afraid of these kind of restrictions like copyright. You can freely use uh, the art from this uh, public, let's say, source. Um, and mm, second or further definition, creative commons. Uh, creative commons is a way a uh, little similar like public domain is way to make your work in the public domain and not subject to copyright laws again. So um, Creative Commons was started as a movement to make images available and to, um, to share information. And on the organization websites, it's because this is the organization and it has own website, it states that Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that helps overcome legal obstacles to the sharing of knowledge and creativity. So in order to achieve their mission, Creative Commons uh, provide uh, Creative Commons licenses and public domain tool uh, that give every person and organization uh, in the world a free, simple and standardized way to grant uh, copyright permission for Creative Commons and academic works. And you can find them under this website. I just noticed you here. Um, so on the other hand, and what I have just already said mean, it means when um, you would like to use someone other works in your own uh, work of art, you could um, just try to use the Creative Commons to grant or to use uh, the legal rights. Um, because uh, the idea of um, a Creative Commons is that the artist that is called licensor can grant her or his permission to share and use her his work on the conditions that will be chosen by the artist. And on the other hand, 
um, this creative, creative Commons allow any person that is called licensee to get a permission to use someone's work. So someone is granting the access to his own work and someone else is um, using and um, is able to use someone else work. And on a Creative Commons uh, website, um, you will find the license chooser where the artist is asked to pick a certain element of license. Uh, for example, you need to choose whether you want to whether you allow to adapt your artwork or maybe you allow the commercial use of your work. So this is how this is whole procedure that um, will help you, as I said, to grant your uh, legal rights to someone else and to use your artwork uh, by someone else. Of course, Creative Commons provides terms and conditions. It's, it's kind of agreement and contract that is uh, existing in a um, digital way, but still um, CC license, um, a means also the rights and obligation, that's pretty obvious. And consider many consideration for the licensors and licensees. Uh, so what you need to do, of course, is to familiarize with all these uh, rules and re regulation, whether you would like to start to uh, use uh, the Creative Commons uh, source or to grant uh, the right. Very, as I mentioned um, in the introduction, the very important part of um, the legal aspects uh, or the matter uh, where the art is present in the internet is of course the blockchain. And art on the block and the blockchain uh, are very strict, strictly connected. And um, as we, all aware the blockchain and as well as the NFT and metaverse and other kind of cryptocurrency are very uh, popular popular lately and uh, the essence the meaning of NFT for example because we are trying to describe the legal aspects of NFT um, has dramatically. Um, uh, increased recently and I think we are all aware and we are observing it uh, right now that the market for the NFT has been expanding and rising uh, dramatically and I think um, every area of business is trying to find their place uh, also in the NFT, um, um, let's say, field. Uh, because as you may, might know, uh, for example, they're existing the NFT of NBA player where they highlight videos uh, of the top shots, for example, the uh, NBA player, and they just sell it online the market. Uh, I also noticed lately that uh, our domestic uh, food soccer team also released a similar material with the tokens and it's, uh, it's they're trying to sell it um, online. Uh, uh, as well as, uh, for example, mainstream brands or shoe brands or fashion brands also uh, try to work or um, be the present on uh, uh, NFT field. Uh, Nike has patented a system in which a customer acquires a virtual um, version of a shoe. And uh, we have plenty other businesses that are working with um, the NFT regarding the fashion. Uh, lately, I was uh, reading about the project or business, actually the startup that is called Rent the Runway. And this is the premier uh, subscription fashion services that powers people to rent a designer style for work, weekends and events. And uh, some specialist uh, from that company stated that uh, wearing, for example, uh, wearing the digital clothes uh, 
in the metaverse or in a NFT um, reality or even on a Zoom meeting. So uh, on a meeting like this one uh, will be commonplace for uh, um, everyone for very soon. And uh, the fashion um, metaverse fashion shows and fashion of NFT uh, will be also uh, present and um, uh, the people stated that um, more mainstream, even more uh, mainstream fashion brands launch digital lines. So that's a um, very important market. And I think it's, we think it's a matter of a time that it will grow in this direction. So talking about art on the blockchain and the legal aspects of NFTs, just a quick revision what the NFT is. Um, just one sentence of introduction. And NFT is a digital file on the blockchain that show who owns a unique piece of digital content that cannot be edited or deleted. So any digital content can be minted into NFT. Um, generally, basically, that could be photographs, other digital works, songs, you know, tweets, items that exist only inside video games and even memes. Uh, and the important distinction um, between traditional works and ones sold using NFTs is that work must be either created in a digital medium or be digital image of physical work. Um, NFT allows the artist to be um, monetized they, they, they work. So that's the uh, very much the advantage of the blockchain uh, in regarding um, with the art. And for example, the NFT can include the smart contracts that can specify the right of the buyer and the seller. And that uh, contract that is strictly connected with the token um, with our database uh, can be, for example, uh, that that creator uh, or the first buyer of the NFT received a certain percentage of the NFT sale each time the work is resold. So that's the great opportunity for the artist to turn your art that uh, was in a digital way or, or, or even in a physical way to, um, um, to the, um, something that could be sold online uh, and successfully um, could bring you some money. And of course, we have marketplaces for NFTs. Um, I'm sure you all heard about that one. We have Rarible, uh, we have OpenSea, we have Super Rare, we have Portion, we have Nifty. And uh, all these marketplaces, of course, delivered and uh, provide the terms and conditions. And when Starting when art when being an artist, you want to start with the NFT adventure. Uh, first of all, of course, you, uh, what you have to do is to familiarize with all the terms and condition and and try to build uh, your uh, work art um, uh, due to the terms and condition that are stated on this particular market places. We have seven minutes left. Uh, okay, and yeah, that's basically the last um, board I prepared for you. This uh, on which I'm gonna quickly revise about the risks and hazards. So, as uh, I was trying to tell you, the while internet can help the artists to promote themselves, to level up their work, and eventually get the and gain the money, mm -hmm. it of course can bring the potential negatives and counter piracy, another infringement. Uh, or even massive amount of electricity consumed by the blockchain system. So 
now. I prepared some examples of infringement uh, of the art and internet. For example, um, someone could use artwork um, or also tokenized artwork into NFT without the permission. So that's the basic um, thing, without the permission of the artist, of other right holder. And uh, after that, he could upload some artwork on the internet. Um, for example, someone could use someone else's piece of art and image in his own uh, internet uh, and digital artwork. And uh, what else? Uh, someone uh, could uh, also use or you can find or appear a very similar artwork to some other work when they are not inexact copies. And what could also happen is just uh, someone will hack the artist's computer or uh, hacking the blockchain or other malfunction of the infrastructure may happen. And uh, what you need to do was, as I said before, familiarize with your rights, sign the contracts if it's possible to know the terms of the contracts. Uh, and to protect, uh, for example, your computer. Um, so that is the easiest way. Uh, and in the cases of violation of rights, yeah. you can see remedy and call for termination of infringement. You can try to contact with the owner of the website or with the uh, website administrator. You may consider also suing the infringer. Uh, in case of infringement, artist and other right holder may, of course, bring a claim against the seller or creator of NFTs for copyright infringement um, on the basis of a contract and in accordance with other legal um, rules in a certain jurisdiction. And uh, at the end, at the bottom, of course, that's the gold advice. Uh, if it's possible, you could get the proper insurance coverage or seek legal advice in any time if it's necessary. It not also needs to be the paying uh, legal advice. You could also seek a uh, nonprofit organization that could help you in your situation. Yes, I think this is the information I prepared for you today. Paulina, thank you so much for amazing presentation. I believe this is a really great introduction to art on the internet, uh, giving a very great overviews and as well threats for uh, the whole audience. If anybody has any questions, do not hesitate to either like message it in the chat or just turn on your mic and, and ask your question. And uh, before uh, others are going to start asking, uh, I would love to ask you, Paulina, uh, what do you personally feel that is the biggest threat, what artists are doing, or like the, the biggest uh, issue, what artists are doing on the internet, from your perspective? Okay. I will try to make the sound better. If you could please repeat your question, I will try to answer. Yes, sure. Uh, what do you feel is the biggest issue with artists? What is the biggest mistake they're doing? Um, I consider the biggest mistake and issue is that the artists do not familiar with art, with a law at all. They, I think, and I assume they pretty much afraid of legal of any legal issue. I am fully aware that the artist uh, should be um, focused on their work, but still they should um, have the basic knowledge of the right and obligation that, that are connected with the artwork. And um, that this is the also the part of their work because when they want to promote themselves, when they want to sell their work, they need to uh, step into connection and step into some kind of uh, relation, a legal relation, depending it's the a legal agreement or maybe it's just a sole transaction. Still, this is the legal transaction or yeah, interaction. 
Like and do you have do you have any signs or questions that artists uh, are signing or uh, are indicating you that they have a special I don't know uh, problems in some kind of areas? Well, uh, I have to say that we very much um, see that artists do not even read contracts; they just sign something. And they okay. know what they're signing. And then, like, I don't know, a year later or two years later, they're coming and asking, oh, what is this? Why is this there? So they, yes. they don't know what they're signing. And uh, another thing is that basically they do not protect their art enough. So they, like, publish it everywhere. Like, let's say Instagram, Facebook. And we had a lot of uh, artists uh, whose work just got stolen and sold through Amazon or Walmart. Okay. And they had no clue about it, and they had no copyright. So, yeah, even those kind of things. Yes, and uh, yeah, as we said, the internet is just a wide and spread platform, or for, for the public. And yeah, social media gave us and gave the artists the opportunity to show the work and the piece of art. But yeah, as you said, the, this opportunity is related with risks and threats as well. So if you want to show your work, so someone else on some other platforms you need to have the minimum uh, protection so you need to for example read the terms and uh, conditions of such platform for example and so you could expect uh, what yeah could happen with your artwork and it's so easy to you know to, to click your uh, uh, your image image of your uh, artwork and use it in some other place so um yeah we need to all be aware of it okay the, the, this is this is my uh, last information for you an invitation for the contact uh if you have any questions any inquiries and you have if you have any issues in poland or any questions uh, being an artist and having any artistic contract or problem please contact with me or with my partner and feel free to call and talk with us yeah. and hopefully we will have an uh, opportunity to cooperate uh, uh, each other in the future if we will think and organize any other future project we're happy to um, cooperate with victory art yeah. Thank you so much, Paulina, for amazing seminar. Thank you so much for amazing words. Uh, guys, I would definitely suggest you all, if you have any legal issues, uh, definitely contact uh, Paulina at paulina.meller. Uh, yeah, slash Kmieti. Slash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And DJ. Not, w yeah. Dot PL. So definitely yes. uh, contact Paulina there. Uh, there. There's as well one other seminar Paulina did uh, I think three weeks ago, which you can yes. find as well on our website, the recording uh, over there. Uh, this recording will be available on our website as well. So feel free to, to go again through the seminar. If you have any questions, um, you can always contact uh, Paulina. They have amazing legal team. They're always able to help you. <laughs> and uh, yes, this is the last seminar. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm really excited that we could uh, end it with this exciting topic. And I'm really uh, curious about the collaboration in the future. Thank you so much for our amazing <laughs> partners for the DJW Gallery. Okay. Cong congratulations that you uh, achieve uh, the project and you realize a whole the project with success. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paulina. Thank you as well to Thank everyone you. who are joining us this week. And I'm excited for next seminars. Have a great Thank day, everybody. You too. You too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.